everybody. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a 4D opening birdcage. And the birdcage itself is all made out of wire and you have to be almost insane to try to do this. I regretted it when I was about halfway through because it was the biggest pain in my butt ever. Besides this one. She takes a very close second, but yeah. It was just so much and it just kept falling apart and I had to keep putting it back together. I do That's love... What I love he fell down. I do love the final result, but... Oh you have to know that it's probably gonna give you a pain. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and appreciate my efforts. And the other thing I wanna mention is that my first live class that I'll be doing on YouTube that is completely free is going to be on the 21st of January, which is a Thursday coming up. And if you wanna be on an email list that just reminds you when the classes are, I plan on doing them monthly. And it gives you just like a quick overview of what the class is going to be about, so you have kind of a sneak preview, as well as give you a list of supplies to have ready, then please send me an email to hotpinkzebrapolish at hotmail.com and I will get you on that email list and you will get all the details ahead of time. So I hope you guys love this video and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. I'm going to start this nail with an overlay of aqua acrylic. The great thing with this particular design, as you know, as well as many of them, is that there are so many different color combinations that you can choose from that you could really adjust this and make it your own. Even if you make it the opposite, like if you wanted a light pink background with a teal bird, that would work out too. But after we have the background color, I'm going to encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic just to make sure it is nice and strong. The acrylic I was using is a double dip color, so it didn't really need the encapsulation, but I personally just really love the look. I think it adds extra depth. So for this particular design and with the products I was using, this was for personal preference more than necessity, but I always like to mention it because a lot of times it is out of necessity. But now we're going to file this nail into shape with the e-file to make sure it is nice and strong and, you know, all smooth and all that great stuff. I always have to do extra filing when I'm doing a stiletto nail. I feel like they always get a little bit weird looking on the edges, so keep that in mind. But now we're going to be applying a layer of gel top coat over the nail so it is nice and shiny. So with some brown acrylic, we're going to be sculpting our branch across, you know, almost like a half moon. You guys know half moon, that trend. It doesn't seem like it's as popular now as it was a few years back, but kind of like that half moon line. So follow that line. And then as you're working on your branch, give it a little bit of a twisty pattern. You want this to be very whimsical and very cute. And just a straight branch would be perfectly fine if that's what you want to do. But to add a little bit more of an interesting pattern to it, that little bit of a twist look really does add almost like it's kind of a rope. And then off of that branch, you're going to want to add little twigs coming off here and there. That's going to be for the start of your flowers. And it almost seems like in the end design that those little twigs kind of disappear because the flowers cover them up for the most part, but they do add a nice base just to work off of. So now with some white and pink, I'm going to be adding my flowers. And I kind of was going off of, um, if you guys know the Arizona, the Cherry Blossom Arizona nails that were really popular when I first started doing nail art. It was like the hottest new trend back then, but they're still kind of, they still float around. People still love that look. And I kind of was inspired by that. So I'm going to do those white and pink flowers on the teal background. <laughs> I just love it. I, yeah, I was a big fan back then. Although I don't think I've ever done a traditional set of Arizona cherry blossom nails, but either way, we're going to use that as our inspiration today. And then we've got, so a little bit of white and you can pick up a double tone bead, but because this is such a small section of acrylic, it is hard to get a two tone bead that is this tiny. So it's almost easier to place down the bead of white and then add the pink to the center and spread it out. But however you want to do it is fine. So now with some more of that brown acrylic, we're going to be adding the perch that goes across, I'd say about like a third from the tip up the nail so that you have plenty of space for your bird between the branch and the perch. But do just a straight line of that brown acrylic across the center or a little bit below center. And that will, it doesn't have to be very thick. This one can be a very thin line of brown. And the reason for that gel top coat prior to doing all of this sculpting is that it'll give you a nice surface for those skinny little lines of the branch and the perch. So now we're going to be sculpting a cockatiel with white acrylic and I'm going to match the color of my flowers to the color of my bird. So if you are going to switch up the color combination, I really love that little bit of matchy matchiness that was added in. So if you want to make a purple cockatiel, purple cockatiel, oh that was harder to say than I was expecting, then maybe you want to do purple flowers too. So we've got the little wings coming down and my cockatiel is facing away from us with like overlooking, overlooking her shoulder or his shoulder. Like he's looking back at us at the tail feathers. They don't have as long of tail feathers as some birds. So that actually really lends itself to this design since if you're doing a bird with really long tail feathers, then it might extend past the 
you know, the area that you have for making the cage. So we have those little back of the head feathers kind of tip in the acrylic a little bit for where the beak is going to be. I really try to make those feathers really delicate and really wispy looking. That's actually a really good thing about working with white acrylic is white acrylic always, at least in my experience, seems to have a like stretchier texture than some other colors, especially ones that have a like really dark colors tend to, the texture just gets a little messed up because there's so much pigment in them. But white acrylic always seems to just kind of work easier. So if you sculpt your bird with white acrylic, it just is gonna go a little smoother. Making those little head feathers, as you could see when I was sculpting the first two, I could easily just stretch the acrylic and that seems to just happen a little bit better with white. So now keep adding different layers to your bird and you can do this either with acrylic like I am or wait and do it with paint depending on whatever you find to be easier for you. A lot of things with doing nails and well anything in life is finding what works for you and so that's what I love and hate about watching tutorials from you know either myself or from other people is that a lot of times you find that people are very, you have to do this and then this and then this. And I just don't believe that. I believe that, you know, you can change how you do things and make them your own and, you know, adjust techniques and you don't have to follow a tutorial, you know, by the letter. Absolutely not. There's no reason for that. You can adjust things and make them your own. And if you find a certain technique works for you and you figure out how to apply it over and over in different ways, and that just makes life easier, then go for it. So if you are a painter, then do more painting by all means. Or if you are a sculptor, try to do as much as you can with acrylic. But now here comes the fun part. And by fun, I mean total headache. We're going to be making our little birdcage out of wire. And if you are somebody that works with wire a lot, this would probably be easier. And I would say I work with wire a moderate amount. So it wasn't too horrible, but it certainly was a hassle to get it to stay glued together. So we're going to just first bend our wire into that beginning shape of the outside of our birdcage. And then we're going to secure it to the nail. And I started out all of this with using nail glue and I quickly switched to using gel sealer and then flash curing it because I found that worked a lot easier than trying to wait for the nail glue to dry and holding these skinny little pieces of wire in place it completely still while you're waiting. So after that first thing is done, this is now gel sealer from here on out. We're going to be doing another curved piece of wire that is going perpendicular to that first one so it sits up. So we got the gel sealer and then flash curing it. If you have a flash cure light, that makes it easier. But even so, it may take two, three tries to get each and every single piece of this thing to stick together. And so the whole time I was doing this, so my husband comes up and he asked me if I wanted a snack, which is a pretty typical uh, evening ritual for us is if I'm working, he comes up from getting done exercising, goes, do you want a snack? And I say, yes. And I usually give him a time frame, like I will be done in 10 minutes or five minutes. And this particular nail, I said, I've just got to finish these couple pieces of wire and I'll be done. And it took me like 45 minutes and I was so angry and hungry for that matter. So after you've got that first one that goes right above the bird, you want to add the second piece of wire to this stage that goes right below the bird. So this is like the frame around where the door is going to be. And so you have that first one and then you're gonna go through and you're gonna add the second one. And this is a really long break where nothing is happening in the design. So if nobody was listening to my voiceover, then you'd be pretty bored with me. But we're going to take and add these two little pieces of curved wire that are actually the start of the hinge of our door before adding that one to the bottom so that we can actually get them in. So then add that one to the bottom and so those two that are just hanging down for right now, make sure that you don't forget to add those because they are crucial for making the opening door. So now we have a little hooked piece that is going to be for the, um, like the hook that's holding the birdcage up in our tree with our branch. So attach that hook with more of the gel sealer. So the great thing with gel sealer is that you don't have to worry about, with nail glue, there's a couple disadvantages of it. And one is that depending on if there happens to be any moisture around, if the nail is slightly wet for some reason, or somebody sneezes on this nail as you're working on it and you get moisture on it, it gets white looking. It gets very cloudy and it's just not, doesn't give you a good end result. That and the fact that you never know how long it's going to take to dry. It's either a second or five minutes and it's sometimes hard to predict. But if you're using something like gel sealer or jewelry gel, then you know that it's going to take you know, until you start to cure it to dry. So you have more time to work with it if you need it, or if you want to just keep moving along, you can do that too. So gel sealer is a very effective nail glue substitute, especially for something like this. So we're going to do those little bars going across the top of the cage and then little bars across the bottom. 
And I tried to have all of these pieces pre-cut so that it'd be easy to just keep sticking them on and sticking them on so that I didn't have to worry about waiting and changing gears and going, you know, wire cutting and then applying them to the nail. But it is one of those things where as you're making it, your blueprint that you have in your mind may change. So now you can see I'm measuring the size of the length of the bars for the door. And we're going to cut three of these. And then I'm going to take some poster putty and I'm going to set it on the opposite side from where the hinges are. And then set those little hinged pieces of wire down so that they cannot move. Because otherwise they just wiggle around and you can't get anything to stick together. So if those hold it in place temporarily, this isn't a permanent hold, then you can much easier attach the bars of your door. This is about the point where Terrell came in and asked me if I was ready for a snack. And I said, yeah, I'm almost done. Ugh. Nope, not quite so much. But now we're going to be adding the rest of the vertical bars going across. Hopefully you guys have an easier time of it than I did. I eventually switched to using a curing lamp instead of my flash cure flashlight because my flashlight ran out of batteries. And then my lovely husband says, oh, I'm going to go get you new batteries. It'll be, I'll be right back. It'll be so easy. And we found out that we did not have any batteries. And so then I was holding up my big, huge lamp instead. You know, it's just sometimes you have those nights where everything seems to be going a little bit crooked. So now, before you try to take this thing apart and you try to, you know, open that door or do anything, as fragile as things are when you're attaching them with nail glue, it's the same thing with gel sealer. So you're going to want to apply some clear acrylic around each of the places where you attached things. So every place where you try to glue stuff together, whether you're using glue or gel, just stick some either builder gel or clear acrylic on each of those little bits so that they have a lot more strength. And this particular step may seem tedious or unnecessary, but as soon as you were to go to open that door, if you didn't do this, the whole thing would just fall apart like a house of cards. So don't skip this step and don't skimp on this step. It is vital and crucial and I can't emphasize it enough. And just keep kind of looking around to find all of those places and they won't really show up too much. And as you can see, I just tried to open the door too soon and the acrylic wasn't set up and it popped open. I had to do some fixing. But now that we're all done with that, wire disaster then we can do the finer details with acrylic paint so i like to add just little details here and there i added some gold shininess onto my branch and then i'm going to do some highlights on my flower a little bit more white a little bit more pink and just some little details here and there and then when it comes to the bird i actually really liked the almost watercolor simplicity and appearance to it but i do want to add some more some more details here and there just to make sure that it looks slightly more realistic. So a little bit of feather highlights, especially on the face and on the wings. This was with white paint just to brighten things up. A little bit of a highlight on the perch that the bird is sitting on. And then, of course, you do have to add the eye. And then a little bit of black here and there. Just, you know, you can kind of figure out how much detail you want to add and either go totally realistic and have a bunch of fun with it or you can keep it very simple. A different version of this nail that I went back and forth between doing was to do a black nail with a scarlet macaw and have like this really bright, intense, colorful bird over the black background with the shiny cage. I thought that would be really pretty too. So that would be another option depending on how you want to take this. But after that, finish the 3D art with some matte top coat. And this nail is thankfully done. If you guys are brave enough and decide to make one yourself, I would love to see it. And I'd love to hear what your experience is, especially with that pesky wire, because I know for me, it was a headache and a half. And I'd love to know if I'm the only one or if everybody else feels the same way that I do or any tips you guys have. I'd love to hear it all. So share all that with me and I will see you next time. Bye.